And the dynamics, so let's talk valuations and first drop them in the context of capital markets. Look, let's face it, Tilray, first U.S. IPO, trades in, in, in the NASDAQ, uh, CGC, Canopy, trades in the New York Kronos. These stocks, their valuations are significantly higher. Tilray's uh, 10 times that of Organigram, which has more funded capacity and is a, a, you know, a very real player in the space as well. So you don't fault Tilray for this. It's a global company, but some of these other guys are too. Look at valuations. The sector right now trades at about 35 times uh, 2020 EV EBITDA. Um, not terribly cheap, but on a funded capacity. So if you want to look at it on an asset basis or essentially on a revenue, potential revenue basis, look at which companies are there. And what I would, what I would point to is those companies that have big market caps don't necessarily mean that they have a robust balance sheet, that, that some of these folks may actually have to go out and raise capital. And I think investors need to be very aware uh, of which companies also need to go out there. And let's face it, in some cases, if you're on that board, if, you, if you're the leader of that company, it makes sense to raise capital at these valuations. That's your currency. And I think they will do that. Should um, investors place a higher valuation on U.S. listed uh, cannabis stocks and the thinking that U.S. institutional investors or institutional investors may be precluded from investing in Canadian stocks? Well, so, so again, you know, today the move in, in the big three U.S. names I mentioned, even GW Pharma, which had been left out of a lot of this rally, even though they have proven uh, efficacy and FDA approval, et cetera, those are the ones that are outperforming. Uh, should U.S. stocks trade at a premium? The U.S. market is is significantly bigger than Canada. But it's a global story that all of these companies are talking about. So uh, again, the companies that trade in New York right now are going to have a premium. Those companies that are running around talking to big institutional investors for the first time who understand that this is a consumer products play. So there's very sophisticated, experienced analysts that are looking at this as a CPG story mm -hmm. uh, in addition to wellness and recreational and substitution effects. So I think that that is what's going on here. And look, I've seen this in emerging markets. This is exactly what happens when you see uh, industry sectors, new asset classes that have been challenged by liquidity are getting the attention of big global investors. So right. um, I don't feel comfortable with valuations where they are. Uh -huh. It's an exciting time for the industry, but I think you need to be very careful.